Almost all bacterial RNA molecules are made up of contiguous stretches of codons, in which the codon for each amino acid is immediately adjacent to the codon for the next amino acid in the polypeptide chain. However, most eukaryotic RNA molecules contain stretches of non-coding sequence called introns. The introns are surrounded by coding sequences called exons. Before these RNA molecules can be used in the cell, the introns must be removed and the exons must be spliced together. While most nuclear pre-mRNA transcripts are spliced using a large complex called the spliceosome, some introns are capable of catalyzing the chemistry of their own release. These self-splicing introns are divided into two classes based on their mechanism of self-splicing, group 1 introns and group 2 introns. Group 1 introns are described in a separate exercise. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand the mechanism of splicing by group 2 introns and the spliceosome, and understand how the spliceosome directs RNA splicing. Both group 2 self-splicing introns and introns spliced by the spliceosome contain an adenine at a site within the intron called the branch point site. These introns also contain a conserved guanine at the 5' end of the intron in a region called the 5' splice site, and another conserved guanine at the 3' end of the intron in a region called the 3' splice site. In the first of two reactions, the 2' hydroxyl of the conserved branch point adenine acts as a nucleophile and attacks the phosphoryl group of the conserved guanine in the 5' splice site. The reaction is a transesterification in which the phosphodiester linkage at the 5' splice site is replaced with a new phosphodiester linkage between the branch point adenine and the 5' splice site guanine. This three-way junction is the reason the adenine is called a branch point. In the second reaction, the newly liberated 3' hydroxyl of the 5' exon acts as a nucleophile and attacks the phosphoryl group at the 3' splice site. This transesterification reaction joins the 5' and 3' exons and liberates the intron. The liberated intron is in the shape of a lariat. For almost all introns, splicing is carried out by a huge complex called the spliceosome. This complex is composed of 150 proteins and 5 RNA molecules called small nuclear RNA. Each of these RNA molecules is complexed with several proteins to form complexes called small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, or SNRPs. Introns spliced by the spliceosome contain conserved sequences at the 5' splice site and 3' splice site, in addition to the bases directly involved in the splicing reactions. The consensus sequences shown here are for humans. The most highly conserved sequences are a GU in the 5' splice site, an AG in the 3' splice site, and the A at the branch site. First, the U1 SNRP recognizes the 5' splice site using base pairing between its RNA component and the RNA transcript. A subunit of an RNA-free protein called U2 auxiliary factor binds to the conserved pyrimidine tract and another subunit of U2AF binds to the end of the 3' splice site. U2AF recruits branch point binding protein and helps it bind to the branch site. This arrangement is called the early complex. The U2 SNRP then replaces BBP at the branch site, aided by U2AF. This is called the A complex. The branch site A remains unpaired and forms a bulge. U2AF leaves the complex. The complex rearranges to bring all three splice sites together. The U4, U5, and U6 SNRPs join the complex, converting it to the B complex. U1 then leaves the complex, and U6 replaces it at the 5' splice site. U4 is released from the complex, allowing U6 to interact with U2, producing the active site. The active site is believed to be comprised solely of the U2 and U6 RNA molecules. The branch site A attacks the 5' splice site, forming the three-way junction. Note, in reality, the branch site A and 5' splice site are much closer together for this reaction. U5 helps bring the 5' and 3' splice sites together, 
facilitating the second transesterification reaction. The spliceosome then releases the mRNA product and the intron lariat. Note, in reality, the 5' and 3' splice sites are much closer together for this reaction. How well do you understand the spliceosome? In this section, you will find out. Group 2 self-splicing introns and introns spliced by the spliceosome share a common mechanism of splicing. In the first reaction, the 2' hydroxyl of the branch point adenine attacks the phosphoryl group of a conserved guanine in the 5' splice site, forming a three-way junction. In the second reaction, the 3' hydroxyl of the 5' exon attacks a phosphoryl group at the 3' splice site. This transesterification reaction joins the 5' and 3' exons and liberates the intron in the form of a lariat. For almost all introns, splicing is carried out by the spliceosome. The spliceosome is made up of small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, called SNRPs, as well as RNA-free proteins. A complicated and precise series of interactions ensures that the RNA transcript is processed properly. You have completed this exercise.